For centuries, humans have been fascinated by the skies. From the early Chinese lanterns to the advent of the modern aviation industry we know today. When the Wright brothers first took to the sky back in 1903, they wouldn't have thought it possible that by 2007, the Airbus A380 Superjumbo would be taken to the sky, carrying up to 850 people across continents of the world. Today, we take it for granted that we can travel for holidays or business meetings to other countries, other continents, for just a few hundred pounds and a few hours of our time. Now, we introduce drones into this same aviation space. In 10 years, in 15 years, in 50 years, in 100 years, I don't know how far we will go with drones. We will move them forward. But one thing I really believe is that drones are going to change the way we look at the skies today in the same way the cars have changed the landscape that we look out from the window today. When people think of drones, they normally go to one of two things. A military vehicle that's used at times of war, or a recreational device that sometimes gets people into trouble. I'm sure you've all seen the news articles. But actually, a drone is essentially an unmanned aerial vehicle. It's something that takes the air without a pilot on board. And outside of the military and the recreational space, how many of these drones have you come across? The most prolific use of drones today is really in the photography and the film industry. Whether it's capturing that photograph of a fantastic landscape, or whether it's capturing some footage of, um, for uh, the next version of planet Earth, you can really do some amazing things with drones. But actually, drones are more than that. They're beginning to replace helicopters in a lot, in a lot of industries. Today, industry, uh, inspections of oil refineries, utilities, infrastructure take place with helicopters with crew and pilots on board. And actually, the dangers of this are high. Drones really reduce this risk. Another really interesting case is how they're used in agriculture today. In a number of countries around the world, people are using drones to evaluate the health of crops on a farm so they can better target pesticides and fertilizers to make sure those yields are as high as possible. Not only that, but it actually reduces the amount of pesticides used, the, pe the number of pesticides used that actually enter the water system and the amount of fertilizer that's needed, which today accounts for one to two percent of the energy consumption worldwide. There are a lot of other examples, as I'm sure you're aware. The skies have always been open, but today drones, an electronic device that costs as little as hundred pounds, makes these skies reachable by the non-traditional aviation. But actually, in the, in the cases that we've discussed, and many more, the skies will become busier. And we need better organisation, better order in the skies for drones. We need to provide drone pilots the tools, the services, the software that they need to safely plan their flights and safely undertake those flights. And that's what we've been building. This is an aviation chart. We started the process by looking at what traditional aviators would use to navigate around the countries. Now, a pilot may have many years of training experience to understand what this means, but it's complex. You can't expect someone that goes to an electronics, stop, uh, electronics shop and buying a drone to really understand what this means for them about where they can fly, where they can't fly, where it's hazardous to fly. So with a great respect for the accuracy of this data and the importance of keeping it up to date, we developed a set of solutions which essentially can put this sort of information in the hands of those drone pilots. But airspace changes. The chart you saw is updated maybe once every 28 days in some cases. But actually airspace, airspace can change more frequently than this. In the aviation industry, you have something called a NOTAM, a notice to airmen, a bulletin if you like, that aviators will read before they go out on the flight. How do you provide this information in a usable format to a drone operator before they go and take off to make sure that they can comply with the rules? Well, we have to deal with a number of systems with a huge amount of data to, to ingest and process, and the only way we could do this with, with, was with automated systems. 
But actually, if you look at the traditional aviation industry, most, most planes typically conduct their flights at 35, 40,000 feet. Drone operators fly much closer to the ground. People need to be aware of where that electricity pylon is, where that foam mask is, where that wind turbine is when they're planning their flights. But it doesn't stop there. For the industry to evolve and move forward, drones need to be more socially accepted. And privacy is a huge concern here. How do we make sure that the drone operators, as they plan their flight, understand what the privacy concerns around them may be? If they're flying near a school, a hospital, near someone's house, some private lands, making sure they go and get the right permissions and alert people as to what they're doing is really critical for us to bridge this gap. But it doesn't stop there. Once they've, they've identified where they're going to fly, they need to tell people, they need to tell other drone operators in the same way as you'd fly, follow a flight plan when you take a, an aeroplane out. This would allow a member of the public to log in, understand where that flight is taking place and what it is. So if there's a drone flying over their neighbour's house, is that someone doing, doing something malicious and problematic? Or is that your neighbour employing someone to, to survey the roof using a drone? This also allows us to monitor their flight in real time. Understand, in a parallel to how an air traffic controller would speak to a pilot of a plane, <coughs> what information we can provide the drone during their flight. Is there a medical helicopter coming through that they may not be able to see in time? We can provide that information up front with four or five minutes to spare so they can take some action and move out of the way safely. Is the weather condition going to change to the limitation of the hull of the drone? Again, maybe they need to land. Or is there a flight restriction in place? Maybe there's been an accident or incident which has closed the airspace that they weren't aware of when they took their drone off and aren't aware of now as they're flying their drone. Being able to provide this information real time to the drone operator is key. But no drone operator is the same, and drones differ in what they can do. And some sort of registration identity system is key here. Drone pilots have different qualifications, different levels of training and experience. Drones have different capabilities on board, different payloads. Being able to understand who is flying a drone and what they're flying it for means that these sort of services can provide a personalised service to that operator as they're flying their mission. But what we're talking about here is just one very, very small piece of the drone jigsaw puzzle. There are many other players and, and companies and organisations and people involved in this. Whether it's the industries that are going to benefit from the use of drones, whether they are unlocking new opportunities or cost savings for that organisation. Whether it's the manufacturers of the drones. Whether it's the sensors that sit on top of drones. The radars on the ground that allow us to track the drones. The battery technology which allows us to keep the drones in the air for longer. But most importantly, other parts of the big jigsaw would include other aviation stakeholders and members of the public to ensure this industry moves forward. Goldman Sachs suggests that between now and 2020, $13 billion will be spent globally on the drone industry. Today, when you fly your drone, you have to keep it in your sight. It's called visual line of sight. You must see the drone at all times in many countries of the world. But only, even with this regulation in place, we've only really started to scratch the surface of what drones can do. Governments and regulators have understood what the economic benefits drones can bring and are already looking to evolve these rules further. They're looking to enable beyond visual line of sight, remote flights, automated flights, and in the future, maybe even autonomous flights to take place. Critically, this can help us break that one-to-one -one scenario between that drone operator flying one drone. Maybe that drone operator is flying 10 drones, 100 drones, 1,000 drones remotely, or even, maybe even that drone operator is not even in the loop and a computer is running that. Can you imagine the scenarios we can unlock with remote and automated flights? One of the ones I'm sure you've heard of in the news is deliveries. Today, when you order something online, maybe it takes a day, a couple of days to arrive. This is actually quite remarkable already. But if you could use a drone to deliver a package, could you reduce that to a matter of hours or even minutes? There's many other applications. Search and rescue is an interesting one. Today, in some cases, you may use a helicopter to try and locate someone in trouble. 
and collect them. This can take many hours. What happens if I could send 100 drones up with infrared technology on board to locate that person very quickly and then so send a helicopter in to collect them? In this country, we have thousands of miles of railway and pipeline that today is inspected by humans and it's painstaking. It takes a long time, a lot of cost and expense. What if I could run a drone down that infrastructure and understand and inspect remotely? If we look at places um, in Africa where you have villages which are very cut off from, from other places because the road infrastructure is there, we look at using drones to deliver blood to those hospitals over those long distances. Or even having defibrillator drones, which can reach someone in trouble faster than the first responder ambulance could, providing that essential medical equipment on site in those critical seconds. Now we've already removed the, drone, the pilot from the aircraft, but what happens if we start to think about putting passengers back in the drone? There's been some, a number of experiments, both in the US and, and, and in the Middle East, where they're exploring personalised aerial vehicles, a taxi of the sky. But maybe it goes a little bit further. Maybe we, we replace the technology on, on board cargo aeroplanes with the same drone technology. And dare I say it, in the very distant future, the aeroplanes that take you on holiday every year with the drone technology. Of course, all of this technology still needs to be proven. We need to make sure it is fit for purpose and very safe and deemed safe. The skies will become busier and we need to put the systems and services in place to, to provide a traffic management solution to handle this. An air traffic control for drones, if you like, an orchestrator of the sky. Well, with predictions that we could be seeing 10 million drone flights per day across the world by 2020, this can't be someone sitting in an air traffic control tower somewhere. This needs to be an automated technology system that provide this, this guidance and support to pilots. This is something obviously we've been building. This is something that a number of other countries, uh, companies are looking for and a number of R&D projects are working on. We need to understand how we can effectively plan efficient routes between two points, making sure we have separation assurance in place to avoid any collisions occurring. We need to understand things like the priorities of drones. For example, should a drone delivering an organ have priority over a drone delivering a book? Probably. Should a drone delivering an organ have priority over that aircraft landing at Heathrow? A question still to be answered. I leave you with some final thoughts. Where the drone industry be in the future? As I said before, no one knows. It will transform the sky. But actually, will people own their drones? Will companies own drones? Will they rent them? Will they even have pilots? People want results whatever the drone can deliver, whether it's delivering a package, transporting a person, taking that unique photograph, analysing that farm of crops. They don't mind how it's done, it just needs to be done. And with a world of connected, automated drones, maybe the answer is drones on demand type system. Drones as a service. Where someone could undertake and tell a service of some sort what they want. And all they would have to do is have the results delivered back to them without any knowledge of the aviation or drone industry. Thank you very much.